I have to hold my ground now or risk being run over for the rest of my life. I don't know what it's like to grow up gallow, surrounded by people who love you. People who are only looking out for your well-being all the goddamn time. People who will always have your back. I run my sweaty palms down the front of my jeans and take a deep breath. I've never had anyone besides my gran who gave two shits about me. Do you know what it's like to be that alone, not knowing love or safety, even as a child? I pause for only a second, and when he starts to open his mouth, I continue. I do. I never had anyone but myself to fall back on. I never had Sunday dinners, big family Christmases, birthday parties, or things most people get to experience in life. I had shit, and I came from shit, but now I'm trying to break free start over, become someone better than my past, someone different. I hold up my hand because I want him to hear it all, and the last thing I want is him interrupting me. The fact that you'd hold their sins against me, telling me to stay away from your daughter because of things outside of my control, is pure and utter bullshit. I thought you were a better man. I thought you were a fair man. I thought you were... Stop, he growls. I'm not finished. I raise my chin defiantly. You spoke. Now it's my turn, he argues, rubbing his face. Kids never stop giving stress and heartache. I don't care how old she is. I'll always worry about her. He twists his hands together, eyes trained on me. Am I just supposed to turn that off? I lift a shoulder and shake my head. She should never have been wrapped up in my father's business. All I can say is I'm sorry. I glance down as I grip my knee, trying to stop it from shaking. No matter how much I try to leave them behind, all their hate and bullshit, somehow it follows me. I gaze at him again. You worry about Gigi constantly. There's never been a day when my parents have worried about me. Never been a day when they gave two shits if I was alive and breathing. Never been a moment when they wondered how something would affect me and my brother. They are vile, worthless, and selfish people, but no matter how hard I try to break free, their bullshit follows. Joe passes his hand over his lips, his fingers rubbing the stubble along his jaw. You had a bad life. I have a great life now, but I had a shit childhood, I correct him. No one should have the sins of their father follow them. No one should have to worry about whether or not they'll be able to take their next breath because of a deal their father made. I hold Joe's gaze. With him in FBI custody, DeSanti's dead, and my mother not breathing, I'm hoping it's all behind me. A shadow passes across Joe's features as he shakes his head. I'm sorry about your mom. I want to say I'm not sorry because, well, I'm not. It's cold, callous, and a shitty thing to do, but the woman never gave a damn about me. Why should I give a single shit about her? Will you be heading up to Tennessee to handle her affairs? He asks when I don't reply. I blink a few times, eyebrows drawn down, wondering if that's what I'm supposed to do. Is that what a person does in my situation? Possibly, I tell him, because I have no idea what someone does after a family member dies. Take as much time as you need, he offers with so much kindness in his voice, I'm completely thrown off. Then it clicks. He's trying to get rid of me. I have to talk to my gran, but I'm sure I'll only be gone a couple of days. My brother and gran should be able to handle everything without me. They've been getting by without me for years. Joe leans forward, resting his elbows on the desk. Does he live with your grandmother? I nod. He does, since my mother. Gotcha. Well, let me clue you in on a few things. As a man with a few brothers, I can tell you your brother is not okay. Your brother needs you more than anyone else has ever needed you. He does? I haven't given much thought to Austin since hearing about my mother. You think? Death has a way of changing someone, especially when it's the death of someone you love. You may not have any good feelings for your parents, but maybe Austin does. He's trying to work through those feelings, and it's not easy for him at his age. Hell, it's not easy at any age. You'll need your strength to help him through this time. We haven't been tied in years. Ten years, to be exact. I haven't seen Austin since I'd blown town, leaving my parents and everything else in my life behind. Your blood. Tight or not, he's going to need you. This is going to give him a reality check. Don't you remember when you were his age and you thought you were untouchable? 
This is going to have him facing his mortality. I leaned back, exhaling and coming to terms with shit I hadn't thought about. Yeah, I whisper. Their darkness clung to me, became part of me. I'd spent ten years trying to break free from that time in my life, from the hate they gave freely and showed to me. Why, I have no fucking clue. But at this point in my life, I don't give a fuck anymore. But at Austin's age, I was angry. I wanted the world to feel the pain I felt. You're going to need more than a few days to sort him out. Don't rush back on our account. We'll handle our appointments. Izzy will reschedule your clients so you don't have to worry about anything except spending time with your family. Thanks. I dip my head, trying to be gracious, but knowing he's not going to all this trouble out of the goodness of his heart. Now, can we talk about the giant elephant in the room? Joe lifts his chin, twisting his lips as he pulls at the collar of his black t-shirt. I'm not happy about it. About us being together. About everything, he answers in a flat tone. About what happened in Daytona. About the bullets and your father. About everything, he repeats. I lean forward, resting my elbows on my knees, and look him right in the eyes. I can't change what happened, but I can make sure nothing like that ever touches her again. I can love her like no one else ever can or will. I can make her happier than anyone else has before. Hell, I pause for a moment and lean back. I already have. He draws in a deep breath before sighing. When I thought about my little girl growing up, I never pictured her with a guy like you. I thought she'd find a college boy, settle down, and have a family. I never pictured her running for her life, hiding in a goddamn closet as bullets were flying. I can see he's not going to get over that little event. It's burned into his brain, and when he looks at me, all he sees is someone who brought that to his daughter's door. Shit happens. I don't have the flashy cars and big bank account, but fuck, I do the best I can with what I have. I may not have grown up surrounded by expensive things and the love of my parents, but I'm a good man, Joe. He grunts as I sit up straighter, winding myself up for the big finish. I work hard. I do the right thing. I protect those I love, even if it costs me my life. I would have gladly jumped in front of a bullet for your daughter. I'd do anything to keep her safe and happy. I'm sorry if that's not good enough for you, but the only person who will decide if Gigi's going to be my girl is Gigi. No one else. I touch my chest. Not me. Then I point at him. Not you. Not your wife. Not anyone else in this shop, only Gigi. I pitch my thumb toward the door, driving the point home. Joe snaps back his head like I've slapped him. You're suddenly very wordy, kid. The corners of his mouth curve up ever so slightly, and for a minute, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. There's two ways this conversation can go. He'll back off and give us space, or he'll come down harder, trying to push a wedge between us just to show how much pull he has over his daughter. I'm not trying to fuck with their relationship to save ours. That's the last thing I want to do. Gigi has something special with her father, hell, with her whole family, and I'd never let her throw all that away for someone like me. I can't punch your ass out, so I gotta fight you with the only thing I have, I shrug, giving him a smug grin. You can say whatever you'd like to me about our relationship, about me, about your displeasure at the entire situation. I'm grown, I can handle it. But just to clue you the fuck in, she's grown too. Joe's eyes widen, but I don't let his shock stop me. I respect you, man. I respected you before I ever stepped foot in ink. I respect you even more after watching you with your family. The depth to which you love them is something I strive to find and hold on to in my life. The last thing I want is you as an enemy. He opens his mouth again, but I shake my head. I tried to end things with your daughter after we left the Disciples' compound. She wasn't having any of it. You know how she is. She's going to dig her heels in and do whatever the hell she wants, no matter what either of us says or thinks. I tilt my head, waiting for his response. He seems surprised by my words, almost taken aback by them as he watches me without moving a muscle. I can take his anger. I can deal with his disdain for our relationship. The one thing I know I can't take is his silence. I shut up, he rasps. I snap my mouth shut as I lean over my legs. The man has finally found his words, and I am not about to stop him from talking. 